Here we are taking a look at the Fury Warrior. Absolutely fun to play, guys. Really good. Enjoyable. It's great on single target. It's great on AoE. Where does this thing end up lying? It's a very highly mobile melee class. That's exactly it. It's very highly mobile. It's high damage, and it does very, very good. Where's the damage going to play at? What abilities are we looking at? Talents, artifact, what all are we looking at later on down the road? We're getting ready to cover that right now. But the main thing I got to point out is Warriors have had some very, very good love coming out of this expansion with the new animations. With that though, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the abilities. Here we are taking a look at the abilities. Uh, Battle Cry is still here. One minute cooldown. La Lusa Cry granting 100% increased critical strike chance for five seconds. This is a great timed cooldown. Uh, one minute CD also really gives it a good benefit. Berserker Rage, one minute cooldown, go Berserk, removing and granting immunity to fear, sap, and incapacitate effects for 6 seconds, so just a general, like, CC negator, uh, works pretty decent. Bloodthirst, this is basically the same, but they've done some improvements with this. Uh, as you can see, it is reduced by haste now, so normally it would be like a 5 or 6 second CD, but because of haste, it actually gets reduced. They also gave it more damage, so it's higher on the priority list. It generates 10 rage whenever you use it, and it still has a chance of enraging you if it crits. Really nice gameplay out of this, and I love the fact that they gave it some more priority through its actual damage. We'll go over that a bit more in the gameplay itself, though. Uh, charge. Charge is still here. Generates 20 rage and works basically the same. You're going to charge and root for X amount of seconds. 20 second cooldown, though. Yeah. Not bad. Still decent. Commanding Shout. Good uh, AoE survivability utility. And basically you let loose a Commanding Shout, granting all party and raid members within 30 yards, 15% increased maximum health for 10 seconds. After the effect expires, the health is lost. Dragon Roar is a talent. We will go over that here when we take care of the talents. Enraged Regeneration. Lots of changes to this one no longer just passively heals you but what it's going to do it's a two minute cooldown and it reduces damage taken by 30 percent there's your shield wall and bloodthirst restores an additional 20 percent health usable while stunned last eight seconds during this time you can usually get two in and basically increase yourself by 50 percent of your health with two bloodthirsts real nice cooldown if you need the extra survivability and it's great for on-demand use execute well, what can I say? This is going to be your finisher. After 20% health, you're going to be able to hit these people pretty damn hard. And it it plays out nice. Uh, one of the only classes that still has an execute, by the way. I believe Warriors and Shadow Priest are the only ones that still have them. Furious Slash Instant. Now, this is all brand new, but basically you're going to hit the target with your offhand weapon for a decent amount of physical damage. And increases your bloodthirst critical strike chance by 15% until it next deals a critical strike, stacking up to six times. This is going to be what you hit in your downtime more than anything else, just to help proc the bloodthirst crits and getting enraged. Real nice piece to end up working with, and it's got a neat little situation with it. Heroic Leap works the same. Uh, basically, it's going to... Oh, wrong one. There you go. Uh, one of the main mobility items that really, really end up helping out with warriors. Getting you from point A to point B. You've also got charge. Works excellent for getting in and out of stuff. Uh, it, but it's still... It only does a very small amount of physical damage whenever you use it. It's probably better still to charge in and use it as more of an escape. But that's going to be dependent on the player. <clears throat> Heroic throw still here, and basically you're just going to throw your weapon. Ah, I'm too close. Step it back a bit. There you go. Slightly new animation on that one also. Uh, not a whole hell of a lot. There it is. Don't even actually see the weapon. It just looks like a slicing. And with this, 
the other thing I wanted to show is uh, Enraged Regeneration's got a neat little animation. It kind of reminds me of the BM animation. Berserker Rage, nothing too special there. You see the little floating down below. Bloodthirst, that's basically what we've got. Furious Slash. All the animations are quite meaty for the melee setup right now. We'll go ahead and swap this over. And our next ability... Let's see, Heroic Throw, we went over that. Intimidating Shout, pretty decent little CC. Uh, causes the targeted enemy to cower in fear and up to five additional enemies within eight yards to flee. Targets are disoriented for eight seconds. 1.5 minute cooldown. So you can basically just kind of, you know, stop all damage to you for a few seconds while you're out. Really, it doesn't do a whole hell of a lot because damage does seem to break this pretty easy, so... Uh, next ability is actually going to be our artifact ability, and that's Odin's Fury. Instant 45 second cooldown, and it's going to deal a good amount of fire damage, and even more in a dot over 4 seconds to all enemies within 20 yards. Um, this doesn't really have... that was it. Not a whole hell of a lot, just a little spin around. Not the greatest animation in the world. Uh, Piercing Howl is still here. It's going to snare all enemies within 15 yards, reducing their movement speed by... 50% for 15 seconds. Really, what you're using this for is just to slow him down so you can get away, get health back, or whatever you need to do, and then get back in. Again, it's going to be situational uh, in PvE. Pummel, still your basic interrupt. Uh, it's going to interrupt spell casting and preventing any spell in that school from being cast for 4 seconds. Raging Blow, only active while enraged guys still the same with it uh, but what it's going to do is actually generate five rage and then do a mediocre amount of physical damage it's not that great it's actually probably in my opinion the lowest on the priority list compared to the rest of them I mean you've got raging blow which is uh, doing 37,000 Odin's fury but we'll look at Bloodthirst. See, Bloodthirst is doing 44. Furious Slash is 21. So the only thing it takes priority over in most of your items are going to... It's going to just barely be above Furious Slash. And Furious Slash may even take priority because of that increased crit chance. It's really hard telling, but sadly, Raging Blow feels very weak at this point. There's still tuning going on, so this may end up changing. Normally, though, you can fit two into a single enrage cycle. Uh, Rampage, completely new ability, and the magic of disappearing test dummies. Uh, yeah. Anyways, Rampage, 65 rage, enrages you and unleashes a series of five brutal strikes over two seconds for a total of 67,000 damage. Uh, it also, this is great because it not only enrages you and gets you set up for doing some extra damage. It's a way of controlling when you end up enraging outside of bloodthirst crits. This does a pretty decent amount of damage. And with that, uh, we're going to go over to this training dummy. And here it is. So there it was. Not a whole hell of a lot going on with that. But as you can see, it does do some uh, fairly decent. We'll do it again once we get built up to it. Alright, so here we are. We're ready to go, and here's Rampage. That's it. It looks great while it's in the action. Plays out very nice, uh, at least in my eyes, because it, that getting that extra chance of enraging, if you've got the extra rage, helps out a ton. Taunt, you still have this in case you have to pull mobs away that uh, the tank accidentally picked up, or that might be on a healer or something, so you can end up picking them up fairly quickly. Whirlwind still here. Unleashes a Whirlwind of Steel, striking all enemies with 8 yards for 76,000 damage. Causes your next Bloodthirst and Rampage to strike up to 4 additional targets for 50% damage. They put the, uh, <clears throat> the Meat Grinder talent, Meat Cleaver, whichever one it was, I can't remember off the top. They've just baked it straight into Whirlwind for Fury, and it plays out pretty decently. Enrage, getting into the passives now. Bloodthirst Critical Strikes will enrage you, increasing your attack speed by 100%. And damage you take by 20% for 4 seconds. This is where things really start taking off. And it plays out pretty damn awesome. Just seeing you swing your weapons at 9,000 miles per hour. 
Uh, Mastery, Unshackled Fury. This is basically going to increase how much damage you do when enraged. So that helps out a ton. Titan's Grip allows you to dual wield a pair of two-handed weapons and increases your maximum health by 15%. That maximum health helps out because as you are enraged, uh, the damage you take by 20%, yeah, the 20% increased damage really doesn't seem like a lot because you're looking at quite a bit more health than anybody else that's going to be the same level as what you are, same item level. You're always going to have that one up. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to the talents. Here we are taking a look at the talents. Level 15. You have War Machine, passive. Killing a target grants you 30% haste and 30% movement speed for 10 seconds. Just a little bit more mobility if you've got to kill things quickly. Endless Rage, passive. Your auto attacks generate 30% additional rage. Uh, yeah, more rage means more damage. Fresh Meat, passive. Bloodthirst has a 30% increased critical strike chance against targets above 80% health. This is great for initial pulls and the first 20% of the fight, but that's it. After that, this thing dies off really quick. As a way on a longer fight, like a raid boss or something, this is going to be even better just for the simple fact that, hey, this works. Currently in a lot of the five mans too, there's a couple five mans to where you either stay in that 80% range, like uh, Odin or at the ends of uh, Ma Souls, uh, Hil Hilja or whatever her name is. Yeah, that chick. Anyways, you've got her too to where you're constantly in that top 80%, so that would end, this one would end up being quite a bit better. But then there's also fights like the Wrath of Ashara, where you're fighting the wrath it is always in an execute range so this would do exactly nothing this was a good in between on those different ones and by the way this is the spec that I was normally running for a dungeon and questing situation just because it had a good damage and feel to him level 30 shockwave instant 40 second cooldown I took this for utility purposes mainly and what it does is very little damage to all target all enemies in front of you within 10 yards uh, for four seconds cooldown reduced by 20 seconds if it strikes at least three targets I took it for the stun capabilities it helped out a ton on mass AOE pulls and it just really the CC alone just getting those breaks in was really nice storm bolt 20 yard range 30 second cooldown hurls your weapon at an enemy causing very little physical damage and stunning for four seconds this no longer has the modifier on it unfortunately if they aren't stunnable to where it does x amount of it yeah it it really it sucks that's the easiest thing i can say there's nothing good about it and this is basically judgment for warriors or not judgment but hammer of justice that is about all i can end up thinking about when i see this this is your pally stun very unfortunate Double time, passive, increases the maximum number of charges on charge by one and reduces its cooldown by three seconds. If you need to be a little more mobile, this is going to do great and give you a ton of extra rage. So Wrecking Ball, your attacks have a chance to make your next whirlwind cost no rage and deal 200% increased damage. This really isn't a bad feature, guys, and it, it did great in both single target and AoE. And the other thing I've noticed, it doesn't have a, it says it's ha it, ha it has a chance to make your next whirlwind cost no rage, and this may be a bug, but currently, when I have this ability, it, yeah, whirlwind's not costing any, any rage no matter what, which is really kind of weird, I'm pretty sure it's a bug, it just says instant requires melee weapon, no matter what talent I end up taking here. But this does say it makes your next uh, whirlwind cost no rage and deals 200% increased damage. There is no rage cost currently in any spec that I've got. And I'm not sure if this is a bug or if this is something intended and they haven't updated tooltips. With that being said, Wrecking Ball. Very solid choice for longer fights. It makes it to where a whirlwind becomes part of your core rotation even in single target once it procs. Before then, not so much. But it does do a pretty solid amount of damage. Baseline, it does 25,000, so 200% is going to make it a 50,000 hit, and it does hit pretty damn solid. We'll go over that a bit more in the logs. Outburst, passive. Berserker Rage now causes Enrage. 
So you can get that, like I said in the abilities, you can get it to where Berserker Rage has a little more control on Enrage, but getting your extra generation uh, through Rage and having Rampage, there's not a whole hell of a lot of times when you'll end up finding this open enough to really use it, as long as you're able to uh, keep your Rage going and keep your damage flow uh, top priority and you're timing your Enrages right and spending, yeah, there's a little bit of math to it, but not a whole hell of a lot. Avatar, instant, 1.5 minute cooldown, transform into a Colossus for 20 seconds, causing you to deal 20% increased damage and removing all root and snares. 1.5 minute burst window damage, that's basically what this is for. Probably worked great lining up with an execute phase um, and timing it with uh, with battle cry. You know, just, just something to end up getting a real strong execute phase in and starter phase, whichever you're planning on doing. But it's a solid cooldown. Furious Charge. Charge also increases the healing from your next Bloodthirst by 300%. I There's a lot of healing capabilities in this one. There really is. And if you're running from one target to the next, to the next, to the next, I didn't really see a whole hell of a lot of problems in the open world, actual open world, where this was really ne necessary. I, I didn't see a lot of damage out there anyways. And if I got too low, I would just end up hitting Focus Rage and calling it good. So th this is going to be dependent and probably just a shot in the dark, maybe more for PvP. Bounding Stride, passive, reduces a cooldown on Heroic Leap by 15 seconds. And Heroic Leap is now also increased, increases your run speed by 70% for 3 seconds. A little bit more mobility on there. And then War Paint, you now take only 20% increased damage from Enrage. Without this normally enraged I believe it's 30 yeah 30 normally it would be 30 percent so it takes 10 percent additional damage off while you're enraged and again while you're enraged which is quite frequently compared to what live is especially at the lower crit levels you'd be surprised at how well this thing's actually feeling balanced out you only take 20% and you take 10% less damage during that time helps out a ton in questing as you can just continue to chain pull and make it easy Massacre passive execute critical strikes reduce the rage cost of your next rampage by 100% um, This is an interesting little change off during an execute time, I mean, most of the time you're going to want to prioritize over Massacre, but this ability right here, during your execute phases, this is going to give you a free Rampage, which is also going to Enrage you, which will benefit for your next couple executes as long as you have the Rage. Really nice piece to end up seeing in there, and it did play well when you're killing a lot of different stuff with your executes. Not a lot of time spent in Execute Rage, unfortunately. Uh, Frothing Berserker, passive. When you reach 100 Rage, your damage is increased by 10% and your movement speed is by 30% for 6 seconds. So basically, if you're building up and you end up capping, you're going to have a better chance of uh, burning that off and doing extra damage. They're kind of giving... This is weird because normally you would never want to cap your Rage. And this is giving you a reason to cap your Rage, which is an odd change compared to what most are and it just it it felt dirty it really did it felt dirty but uh i did test it out and it it didn't feel like enough to end up going that route and then carnage it's passive reduce the cost of rampage by 20 rage all right cool uh i mean 20 less rage it costs 65 rage right now normally it would be 85 so it is a huge rage dump whenever you do it, but this ends up helping out quite a bit for saving your rage for elsewhere. Level 90, Bloodbath, instant, 30 second cooldown, for 8 seconds your melee attacks and abilities cause a target to bleed for 20% additional damage over 6 seconds. Good 30 second burst window, uh, you're going to do a shit ton of extra bleed damage, that's about all there is to it. Lines up pretty well, uh, and if you want to do the extra control... It's not bad. I did not test this one though. Um, unfortunately, I didn't end up doing enough dungeons to end up testing this one also. But I did test Frenzy. And Frenzy works out pretty nice. It's something to end up managing. 
what it's going to do is whenever you hit furious slash it increases your haste by five percent for 10 seconds stacking up to three times basically this is giving you another reason to end up playing frenzy into your rotation and again this is going to it, it doesn't seem like a whole hell of a lot but you get that 15 percent haste all your abilities are affected on the uh the global cooldown reduction which mainly that's going to be bloodthirst and it's going to make it to where you're able to bloodthirst more often you're going to swing faster you're going to build more rage and it just lines up very nicely over a longer fight getting 15 percent increased haste it, to me this felt really damn solid and I had trouble thinking about swapping it out for bloodbath this may be better but currently frenzy felt really solid and it gave you it, it made you look wicked when you started swinging like a badass inner rage passive raging blow no longer requires enrage and deals 100% increased damage but has a 4.5 second cooldown basically this just puts in a rage and part of your rotation uh, pretty solid actually it hits really damn hard whenever it's procced I mean you're looking at close to what 70k 65,000 somewhere around there uh, it right now it's doing 37,000 or 37.5 so yeah right around 65,000 is what you're looking at with this thing without it critting and then you just have it on a 4.5 second cooldown plays out really well and the other nice part is it is reduced by haste also that cooldown so you can end up definitely getting some more damage involved still like the way of frenzy because instead of it being the the thing about inner rage going this route there's no spontaneous reaction it reduces the amount of fun that I ended up having but it, it because it makes it more methodical than anything else as a war frenzy I had to work on keeping this up and then when I was enraged worry about where I was going to do my next priority was it going on bloodthirst or was I hitting rampage or is execute up or what you know am I gonna hit a um, raging blow there's a lot more thought process than if I took inner rage and inner rage just makes it methodical that's it you're just constantly doing the same few button rotation and it really starts to uh, not really bug you, but it starts to get bland real fast. At level 100, Bladestorm, instant, 1.5 minute cooldown. Uh, if everyone knows Bladestorm, it does 180,000 physical damage over 5.5 seconds as you spin around uh, playing Hot Potato. You are immune to movement and parrying and loss of control effects, but can use defensive abilities and can avoid attacks still. It does have some, you know, you still keep your defensives up there while you're doing the damage. Nothing different than what live is. And you just spin around in a damn circle with your weapons and chop everything to shreds. Great for AoE situations. Um, I did end up obviously testing to see how well it worked. And it felt very weak on the, uh, the Fury Warrior for some reason in comparison to others. But if you look, it only does 180,000 physical damage over 5.5 seconds. That's not a whole hell of a lot. That's like two to three abilities, and I'm saying instant cast abilities. So there's really not a whole hell of a lot of damage going out there unless you end up having three to four targets, and then it'll actually feel like it's doing something. Reckless Abandon, passive. Battle Cry generates 100 rage. Dragon Roar, huge changes of this one. It basically still does the same thing. But you're going to do 17,000 damage to all enemies within 8 yards and increasing all damage you deal by 20% for 6 seconds. Dragon Roar ignores all armor and always critically strikes. Yeah, um, this thing played out very nice. And considering the fact that you can have it up a little over 25% of the time, even better. Or 20%? 25, yeah, 25%? There we go. Bad math. Um, but yeah, it is a really solid damage increase. Basically, if you line this up whenever you've got your bloodthirst up, or if you've got a whirlwind proc that's going to do more damage, you're going to hit this and just do as much damage as you can in that six second window, and then you, 20 seconds later you'll be able to do it again, and it's just a pretty solid, decent amount of damage, both AoE and single target. The better AoE choice, obviously, is Bladestorm. But Dragon Roar does have some nice little cleave off of it. 
and all in all this thing just plays out very well to buff your main abilities now with that this is going to be the talents guys and again this is what i was normally running um, i did not get any testing on bloodbath so i do not know if it is going to take over but frenzy felt really good having that increased haste and then inner rage inner rage was just this row right here was just one of the worst ones for me because it was hard for me to break off of getting this 15 percent haste because of how quick it made the gameplay made it very solid and fun to play as aware again inner when i took inner rage it was very methodical and i found myself in a snooze mode more than anything else good damage mind you it, it was pretty solid damage but it was slow uh, well, not slow but the pacing was just it was paced very paced there was nothing new or better to end up doing really and then bloodbath instant 30 second cooldown this is probably going to take priority in a certain window especially if you're running bloodbath and then dragon roar and you can get some solid damage numbers in there in these small burst windows with that guys let's go ahead and end up moving on to the artifact all right let's take a look at some skins and these are some pretty sexy looking swords uh kind of small for two handers but hey they look pretty good so this is the war swords of volajar volajar whatever I, i'm not sure how they're pronouncing this one but as you can see they are pretty neat looking they've got the the knot work going down the side and then the different color variations just help out a ton uh arm of the dragon rider basically the same thing just way beefier much beefier and uh, we'll let it spin around so we can get a better look i do enjoy these models quite well though and here's the red one purple it's almost too much purple and then the green and then valor a little more cut and dry i mean uh, not cut and dry but um it's different it definitely looks good let it spin let it spin let it spin there's the green ones purple red and then your pvp storm breath storm breath looks really cool it's got the lightning effect uh the blades themselves are a, a little on the basic side but having that uh, extra effect on there i don't know if that's going to mix with uh possibly other enchants but it looks cool i mean it looks cool and there you have it there's the skins we'll go ahead and move right on to the traits here we are looking at the traits and again odin's fury this is going to be your actual artifact ability and it's going to unleash the fiery power of odin bestowed the war swords dealing yeah fire damage and then a dot over time to all enemies within 20 yards a lot of melee are getting this uh this aoe ability for some damn reason and instead of something that actually plays in the actual gameplay itself but this is a it, it's a good hitting ability for an instant cast it, it's, yeah, like, that's about all i can say about it it's better on two plus targets than single targets so it kind of takes a dive on priority on a boss fight <clears throat> but it still does a decent amount of damage first thing out the door though whenever you end up getting these weapons is going to be thirst for battle and increases the damage dealt by blood thirst by 15 percent pretty solid amount of extra damage off of it then uh you have unstoppable it's going to be uh normally a one of three increases the damage dealt by rampage rampage by three six or ten percent then you've got blood craze zero three while you are below 20 percent health blood uh bloodthirst restores an additional one two or three percent health since death rank zero one execute has a 15 percent chance to make your next execute cost no rage that that's that's pretty solid i mean if you get these aligned back to back and then this first one here juggernaut uh first golden dragon execute increases damage dealt by your execute by five percent for six seconds stacking up to 99 times uh, so definitely do some rage pooling and get the extra damage in there and this is going to really increase what you're doing and then if you're lucky with these procs this could line up very well in a longer boss execute range and you'll really start to shine again only good for the last 20 percent of the fight unfortunately death dealer usually one of or zero of three increases critical strike chance of execute by three six or ten percent uh, they have gone from that 9% from all the other testing I've done to an actual 10% at the very end, which it helps out a ton. 
And then you got Wrath and Fury. Increases damage dealt by Raging Blow by 3, 6, or 10%. Normally it would be a 0, 3, but again, the artifacts got have both of these to where they're upgraded. Odin's Champion, second Golden Dragon, rank 0, 1. When you use Rampage, Odin has a chance to declare you the champion of the Valajar for 10 seconds, causing all your offensive abilities to reduce the cooldown of all your abilities by 2 seconds. Basically, you're going to hit buttons for days on this, and if you've got like uh, your battle cry on cooldown, this is going to end up help helping out. Um, really a different... It's going to add some gameplay change in there and something for you to end up watching later. Focus and Chaos, rank 0-1. Your auto attacks have no penalty to hit from dual wielding during Enrage. So, we still have that problem with dual wielding weapons to where you have a, a penalty to hit because you are dual wielding. This is basically making it to where all your melee strikes are actually going to contact with the enemy during Enrage. Lots of additional melee damage is going to be picked up from this ability and that's where a lot of your damage is already and we'll see that in the logs. Helia's Wrath, rank 01, reduces the cooldown of Battlecry by 10 seconds. Yeah, alright. So it brings it down from a 1 minute to a 50 second cooldown. Raging Berserker, 03, increases all damage you deal during Enrage by 3, 6, or 10%. Can't complain about that. More damage uh, during your damage period. Charge generates 5 rage, so it's 5, 10, or 15. Or an additional 5, 10, or 15, sorry. Unrivaled Strength, rank 0, 3, increases all critical damage you deal by 10% during Battle Cry, and this is going to be 10, 20, or 30%. Wild Slashes, 0, 3, increases the damage of Furious Slash by 3, 6, or 10%. Battle Scars, increase maximum health by 2, 4, or 6 percent during Enrage. Um, this is going to help out just for the simple fact that you do take that additional damage. And then our last, but not final, well actually it is our final, Rage of the Valor Jar. Rampage and Execute have a chance to activate ber Berserking, increasing your attack speed and critical strike chance by 5 percent every 1 second for 12 seconds. This is going to be fun to play with, just for the simple fact that you are going to be a non-stop wrecking machine uh, through both Rampage and Execute. Execute range, obviously, due to the lowered cost, it's going to make it a lot easier. Execute's only running 25 rage with the chance to do additional damage. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's only on arms now. But it's 25 rage, and it does a high amount of damage. So under 20%, this is going to have a much better effect. Rampage, on the other hand, even with the talent, it's 65 rage. Without the talent, it's 85 rage. So there's a less chance for this to actually happen. Um, but still, it's going to be a pretty solid da overall damage increase just with this one ability because you're going to start swinging like crazy. And then all that extra crit is going to definitely gain. So with this, guys, let's talk about the actual gameplay and where it's lying. Here we are looking at the Fury Warrior, guys, and let's go ahead and talk about AoE first. I mean, obviously there's a lot to go over with this spec, just because, yes, it has had some major improvements. You're, you are no longer a crit-deprived spec. You can end up taking care of this with less crit, and it actually feels like haste seems a bit more beneficial due to the extra rage generation. So with that, let's talk about AoE. Bladestorm is going to be a great talent for AoE, but let's say you don't have those talents and you want to end up doing some AoE anyways. Generally, you'll run your single target rotation, but you will mix in Whirlwind. What's Whirlwind going to do? Well, it's going to do a decent amount of damage to all enemies within 8 yards, and then it's going to cause your next Bloodthirst or Rampage to strike up to 4 additional targets. Now, Rampage is going to hit like a truck. If you've got that additional Rage up there already, you're going to want to use Rampage and just really do a solid amount of additional damage. It's a very fun gameplay. You're going to see this thing just absolutely dominate on an AoE factor at a baseline spec. Really nice to end up seeing, especially if you have Rampage Talented to cost reduced rage. Bloodthirst, on the other hand, still hits very well. And 
with Bloodthirst only having a chance of causing you to enrage as to where Rampage will guarantee your enrage, Rampage is going to take over in an AoE situation after each Whirlwind if you have the rage to do it. If not, use Bloodthirst and build up to it. That's just the basics of the AoE situation and where your priorities will be. Now you'll still end up having to do certain fear, uh, fillers with like Furious Slash and then you have Odin's Fury which is your artifact ability that's really going to end up helping take the cake every 45 seconds. It's going to do some really nice numbers. Single target. Let's look at single target. Okay, not only do you have all this mobility, uh, with you, you can end up taking double time, which is going to give you two charges, or if you don't take it, you know, you'll still have your single charge. That generates 20 rage and allows you to be very highly mobile, but you also have heroic leap if you need to get out of something, and it just helps out. Where are we lying? What's the difference with this spec in a single target rotation? Not a whole hell of a lot. What you're looking at is uh, Bloodthirst. Bloodthirst plays out very nicely in a lot of different factors. It's no longer hitting weak and then, uh, you know, chance of enraging you with high enough crit and so on and so forth. They've kind of gone away from that gameplay. Bloodthirst hits hard. Finally, they've made it to where it's high on the priority list, not only for the fact that it has a chance to enrage you if you crit with it, but they did a, give it a, a boost in damage, so it's worth actually hitting. It actually, baseline, hits harder than Raging Blow, which is only usable during enrage, which is really weird. Generates, uh, uh, Raging Blow will be the next ability that we kind of cover, but it's going to be second from the last in the priority list from what I've done in testing. Really, it's not the greatest, and the only thing that it ends up beating out is going to be Furious Slash for two reasons. One, Raging Blow generates five rage. Two, it does a little bit more damage than what Furious Slash does. What's Furious Slash going to end up doing for you, being at the bottom of the priority list, though, if you've got it, is it's going to actually hit for a decent amount of physical damage, but it's going to give you a 15% increased critical strike chance um to bloodthirst and this will stack up to six times so it's going to eventually help you with that crit modifier that we've had so much trouble with in the past until higher gear levels on bloodthirst to help keep you enraged and it does very well on balancing also you have certain ways of playing into this with like uh frenzy to where you can end up keeping that up and increasing your haste and that helps play out quite a bit we've kind of gone over a base structure of each ability here obviously executes going to be what you're going to want to use sub 20 percent for a rage dump compared to rampage because rampage costs a lot but and guarantees you're in rage but at the same time it's going to do quite a bit less damage i'm talking like 15k 20k depending on if it crits you know there, there's going to be a lot of additional damage off of it and the rage costs on it is very expensive as to where Executes only 25 rage. A talented rampage is 65 rage. Sub 20% Swap out rampage for execute. That's about all you can end up saying and then run your normal rotation before that Let's go 100 to that 20% you're looking at Prioritizing you're gonna end up wanting to use bloodthirst on cooldown You're gonna want to end up using furious slash to end up building that up You're gonna want to use Odin's uh, Odin's fury on cooldown if you talented into it Dragon's Roar is going to have some interesting gameplay to where you can end up getting little burst windows in there, which adds up real nice. But really, guys, this is going to be a uh, slap the button as it comes off cooldown situation with the only timing that you're really looking at is where your enrage is at. Are you still enraged? No? Okay. Then you're going to hit Bloodthirst. Ugh on cooldown anyways for the rage generation furious slash is going to be the bottom of the priority list if you're in rage raging blow is going to be there if you have enough rage and you're not in currently in rage and bloodthirst is already on cooldown use rampage to actually end up doing a good solid amount of additional damage but it does have a huge rage cost all the same play this like you normally would unless you talent into that weird talent where you're capping rage you never want to actually cap your rage. It's very awkward, very different, and this isn't playing a whole hell of a lot different than what the live is, except it feels like it's more controlled. You're not worrying about that crit situation so much as 
we are on live to where it feels like you are wasting time on this spec for the first two tiers of the expansion and then the third one it blows up because that crit is there and you're able to actually do the damage huge changes with this thing had a lot of fun with it hopefully you do also but with this let's go ahead and end up moving right on to the log so we can take a look at where the damage is coming from so here we are taking a look at the logs just so you can see where the damage is at and you can actually see right up through here you've got these arcane blast charges and all that stuff well arcane blast is actually uh I believe this is off of a pair of gloves that I've got, guys. So it's just a weird trinketed item, but it seemed to do pretty decent amounts of damage. Uh, really odd, though. Um, but that's where it's coming from, more than likely. There's a pair of gloves that you get in a normal quest line that does an arcane blast off of certain abilities, and that's where this is at. So here we are. Melee is your top damage. Uh again with the increase in haste and the way that you're hitting 35.6 percent crit chance but you're a non-stop swinging machine you 87 swings and 73 of them hit now again being that you are dual wielding you still have that miss chance it doesn't matter where your positioning is at you're still going to have that chance and there is that artifact ability that will eliminate this while you're enraged causing you to do even more damage good amount of damage just out of your normal melee swings though then you have bloodthirst bloodthirst is very solid uh with the damage increase you're seeing this thing higher than it's ever really been before and that's good to end up seeing uh furious slash again more or less a filler spell to end up procking more crits out of your bloodthirst 64 percent crit chance that is way higher than i've ever seen it at the beginning of any expansion just nice to end up seeing this thing kind of raining where it should be for a main ability spell and then you've got raging blow really not that strong of an ability unfortunately it, it plays nice but it's not that hard hitting odin's fury um two casts with it it does a decent amount of damage as you can see this is going to be your ticks and your main hits um you do have some decent amount of crit out of there i crit both times off the main ability and then the dot itself actually had a decent amount so it did a little bit more damage than what you would normally see just for that reason arcane blast we already talked about that rampage a little on the low side unfortunately uh the reason for this is one it got cast seven times which really that's not a whole lot of damage out of this thing with its cost it should be higher than what it is but a little on the weak side unfortunately that again bloodthirst has got a huge priority over it just for the simple fact it does have it and you should use it rampage mainly just to end up procking your additional uh enraged damage more than anything else whirlwind uh single target rotation actually it's pretty solid as you can see 15 cast but only 13 hit again this has a lot to do with that dual wielding problem uh for those I, I don't know if i mentioned it but this is the shade of xavius the last boss in the dark heart thicket so it is a single target fight all the way through and through but single target four percent of your damage as it procs does a pretty solid amount of damage um you can see on the uh max damage it was like eighteen thousand. it's not a lot but for a free ability it works out very nice execute for forecasts only three hits average 66,000 again if the execute phase was a little bit longer right through here as you can see you would definitely end up seeing a lot more damage coming off of it but again pretty weak and then you've got rampage offhand okay execute offhand whirlwind offhand so you're looking at with whirlwind right around six six and a half seven percent more more towards the seven percent mark of your damage and then execute yeah six percent rampage you're seeing where the damage lies and you do have the main hand and offhand abilities for each one of these now you'll see all these other additional hits and that's going to be from your extra swings that you do rampage does a decent amount of damage but the way it's broke down for we'll say four again so eight percent and then you're looking at what 
Uh, we'll call that 1.5. So we'll look at 12. Well, let's say 13.5% of your damage is actually going to be through Rampage once you add it all up. But the way that they break it down, they break it down by each individual swing. You've got first swing, second swing, so on and so forth. And it really is a weird breakdown. But it is should be more up between, if they added it all together, between Fury Slash and Bloodthirst at 13% roughly. Not a whole hell of a lot of damage, but it adds up. Each individual swing. With this certain fight though, you can definitely end up seeing they've got all these different Rampage... Where is it at? Raging Blow, Raging Blow offhand, Rampage, 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 Whirlwind, Whirlwind offhand. All these different Rampages are going to be individual swings. And if you really wanted to take the time to look at it, you could go through and just see. This is Ramp or Bloodthirst. All these different Rampages right through here. And it just ramps all the way through really an odd situation with the way that the logs are picking it up right now but it does do a lot of damage melee again that's gonna just be non-stop it, you're, you're just brutal with your melee swings absolutely brutal but guys i hope this ends up helping you out and like always this is here for the enjoyment and a little bit on the learning side but if you did enjoy yourself thanks for watching